Hello, so continuing on this leaf code contest 170, uh, problem 2, uh, which is um, this XOR um, queries of a subarray. So the problem says that we, we get um, an array of positive integers, and a, a, both an array of positive integers and array of queries, such that queries contains left and right. Um, and each query, um, we want for each one, we want to compute the XOR of all the elements from L to R, which are both the values in the, uh, in the array at position I of queries. And essentially that means basically XORing array at position L, uh, XOR array at position L plus 1, XOR XOR until you get to array at position R. And we want to return an array containing the result of all these queries. So, for example, here we got this array, uh, 1348, and the queries are this uh, this way. So, the first one from 0 to 1. So, that means we just XOR 1 and 3, which gives us 2. Um, and just to show you that, um, let me just grab a Python thing here. If we do, um, if we do 1 XOR 3, you can see it gives us 2. So, that's what we have here. For the second one, it's from 1 to 2, so that means we XOR 3 and 4. So if we XOR 3 and 4, we get 7, so that's what we have here. And we keep going like this. Um, and we get this final representation here, this final array. And a similar thing for this one. And you can see here, if you look at the bounds, the array can be big. Um, and especially that the number of queries can be 10 to the power of 4. So we can't just do brute force like XORing manually XORing every time the entire thing because then we would get 10 to the power of 4 by 10 to the power of 4 that may be 9 multiplied by 10 to the power of 8 <coughs> so it will get really big really quickly so we need something more efficient than that um, okay so let's see how we can solve um, okay so let's see how we can solve this problem so um, the first thing that we are going to go through is just some properties of XOR that will <coughs> that are worth knowing and that will help us solve this problem. So, uh, one of the properties of XOR is that um, it's associative, right? So, first thing is XOR is associative, which basically means that if you had um, essentially um, A, XOR B, XOR C, like this, then this is the same as A XOR B and then the entire thing XOR C. So the order basically where you start um, doesn't matter, right? The other thing is that uh, XORing a number with itself is zero. So basically if you XOR, um, let's say, A with A, so XORing A with A, that gives us zero. So it kind of cancels out. Um, and then the other property is that zero XOR any number, no matter what it is, um, that also is, um, sorry, that also is the number itself. That gives us A. So it's equivalent of multiplication by one. You can say in this one equivalent to uh, subtraction, for example. And so with these properties, we can find something out. So basically, if you have, so the problem here that we are dealing with concerns subarrays, um, basically XOR of subarrays, right? So essentially, let's say we have, we would have an array like this, right? With, this is the start position, and this is, let's say, the left position for, uh, for a specific query, right? And then this is the right position, and this is the rest, right? And so, and this is what we are looking for in the, for this query, right? We are looking for this portion here. Right? Um, now, this interval here, let's just note down what the intervals are, right? So this interval here, this is 0L. This here is L to R. Uh, sorry, actually, this here just before L, actually. So, basically, what I'm thinking here is ending here, and this from here to here, and from here to here. So, essentially, this one is left minus one, right? Because it's just before L starts, right? And this here is R plus one, 
and the end of the array which let's call it n minus one here so n minus one all right um, now what we are interested in is mostly getting the XOR for this here right so actually if you look at this um, this entire portion from here to here right that's also just zero to r minus one right so one thing is that you could see here since since we know that if you have a a so we know that if you have something like a xor a that's zero and if you have a xor a and then xor b right we could just put the parentheses here and we'd have zero xor b right which is equal to b right so this here I'm applying it to single numbers but you can extend it to multiple numbers right because if you have let's say a xor b xor a xor b this is still zero because this will cancel out with this this will cancel out with this right so this is for intervals of length two right same interval of length two if you xor it with itself you get zero and this also extends to of length three right same thing and you could keep thinking about this it any intervals of any size if you xor the same interval with itself you'll still get zero and whatever you so if you xor all of this with some other value y you'll still get y because zero xor anything is that th that same thing right so from here we can have something that is the main insight of this problem which is uh, which is essentially that um, the interval, the XOR of the interval LR, right, the XOR of this, that's just the XOR of um, the interval 0 to L minus 1, right? XORing, so XORing the, the rest, so XOR of this entire thing is just XOR of this interval, um, XOR the rest of the interval, so the rest of the interval is essentially um, so actually let me just rewrite this differently right so this here left to right is just the XOR of so 0 L minus 1 XOR the same thing right that's just so interval XORing the same interval with itself the interval with itself like we said here that's just 0 right so this portion here is just 0 right and so if we, so XORing something with itself is just the same interval so this here is the XOR um, of uh, left right right so this is the same right because essentially what I'm doing is just I'm saying um, left right uh, 0 L minus 1 I'm just removing the XOR so that it becomes clear So basically, exhorting the same interval with itself, that's zero, right? And so zero XOR LR, that's just LR. So this is valid so far, right? And so if we go from that, since this is valid here, so what does this mean? So this essentially means that, um, well, this portion here, right? That's just the entire... Uh, think that is 0 to r minus 1 to sorry 0 to r uh, here this is r is 0 to r right so what this means is that this is just equal the xor of the interval 0 to l minus 1 xor 0 the interval 0 to r right that's th that means the exact same thing right and so here you could see that for any interval what we accomplished here is that for any interval we can compute its XOR using just prefix XORs right prefix is anything starting from 0 to some position and here we start from 0 and end at position L minus 1 and we start from 0 and end at position R so basically what we have here is that it's enough it's enough to um, to compute uh, prefix XORs and then we can from that we can just use this to find any XOR for any query in uh, essentially of one time right
because we can just do this operation right one XOR operation and get the query uh, re uh, the query that we are looking for because uh, because we 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 will compute the prefix XOR before right so to get this so essentially what I'm all I'm saying here is that for an interval let me just draw it again for something like this from 0 to L uh, to R here um, and this position here is L minus 1 um, to get the XOR to get this interval here right you just get the XOR of this here right and then you XOR it with the entire thing and this portion here will get cancelled and so you get left with only this right so that's the gist of the algorithm of this problem <coughs> And so now we need to just know how can we uh, compute the prefix XOR, right? That's very simple, right? So we can just go through the array. So pref to compute the prefix um, XOR, let's call it, so that's this here. We can just... So first we can initialize them with zeros, right? So let's just uh, define this in a more clear way. So we could just define, um, so here we'll define our XOR queries function that will get the array and the queries, right? And so the first thing is to compute the compute prefix XORs, right? And then we'll compute for all the, uh, the queries, right? Now with that here, we need a prefix we need uh, uh, first a prefix array, right? So prefix to hold all the prefix zores. And so that would be... We'll initialize this with just zeros. So we will do it for all. Let's call n here length of array. And that would be for all. Um, so for prefix, I'm just going to have an n plus 1 array. Position 0 would hold nothing. Uh, position zero would hold nothing and then the rest will hold all the prefixes for each position right and so here for that I would just go through all the indexes and essentially say that prefix for I plus one since it's just the prefix is just XOR of anything to the left and so when I'm at some position I will just XOR the previous prefix with the current number, right? So that would be previous prefix, which is prefix of i. I will XOR it with the current number, which is just the number at position i, right? And now I have all the prefixes. So now I can compute the queries and put them in um, in the result. So here, um, compute um, queries uh, XORs, right? And so for that, I will need to go through the query. So for each query, we have a start and an end value, right? For each query. And so we need the result here. And then we, for each result, we'll just add. Um, so what we need to do is this, XOR this, right? So what is 0 to L minus 1, right? That's just prefix at position. So here... Um, let me just write it again. So what we have is XOR of 0, L minus 1, XOR of 0, L minus 1, uh, R actually, right? So this here, um, let me just make these left and right so that it's really clear what we are doing. So this is left and right. And so we need, this here is just the prefix of, um, so here is just the prefix of R plus one because our prefixes indexes um, have like plus one just because we don't want to deal with i minus one and so that's why I'm having r plus one here so these indices will be just um, having one and one additional um, like will be a we will be adding one because um, our prefix here the first index we, we are just ignoring so that's just a minor n nuisance here but it's still the same idea and so we'll XOR this with prefix of the start or the left <coughs> and that's pretty much it and we'll return the result um, yeah so that's all there is to it um, we just go from this idea here for 
XOR being both associative and XORing a number with itself is zero and zero XORing something is that same thing. We just go from these properties of XOR that are valid for each number, we extend them to intervals and from there we realize that we need to just compute the prefixes and for once we compute the prefixes we can immediately compute the XOR for each interval um, in O1 time and so we do that for each query and that basically gives us um, gives us the solution here and so if we think about what is the time complexity here you could see in this for loop here we are doing o of n n is the length of the array and here we are using o of m if we say that m is the uh, length of queries right and so overall what we are doing here is just in terms of time complexity um, it's just of n plus m such that m is, n is the length of the array and m is the length of queries um, the other thing is the space complexity. So you can see we are using this prefix array and we are using the final result. And so space complexity here is that, so prefix, that means we certainly have um, length n. And then result is at least is the number of queries. And so that's plus m2. So these are our time and space complexity. Um, okay, so now let's type this uh, solution here into lead code and see if it passes the test cases. Um, okay, so I just typed the solution that we just saw in the overview um, and so pretty much just computing the prefix and then um, computing the intervals, um, XORs um, right away, right? And so in constant time here. So let's run this first and submit it. Okay, so that passes the test cases. Um, yeah. And as we said, time complexity is O of n plus m, n is the length of the array, m is the length of the queries, um, and same thing for the space complexity. Um, yeah, so that's it for this problem. Thanks for watching and see you next time.